There are 32 defenders, 32 attackers, and 15 rank maps in Rainbow Six right now. With each team consisting of 5 members, that's a lot of possible team variations. So how do you know which operator to pick on what maps? Well, I'm sure there's some maps you like playing some ops, and other maps, well, not so much. That's why today I'm going to go through every single operator and tell you the best and worst maps to play them on, so that you can optimize your win percentage and rank up way easier. Stop picking ops on their worst maps, start picking them on their best, and you'll be soaring through the ranks in no time. First, let's start with the defenders. We're going to keep these going in order of the release, so if you want to skip ahead to your favorite ops, feel free to do so. The first defender we have is Smoke. Smoke is, in my opinion, the best defender in the game, so he doesn't really have a worse map, or best map for that matter. He's really good on all of them. For his best map, I have Chalet, and the reason I have Chalet is because shields are firstly really good on this map, and the second thing is that there's a lot of site setups on all of the sites. Besides the basement, I guess. There's a little less on the basement, but the other three, which I think are better anyway, all have a lot of rotates to make, lines of sight, holes, and general and just a lot of setup for this map. That being said, he does have a lot of other maps he's really good on, such as Oregon and Clubhouse, but in general, Smoke is just a great op, so you can play him anytime, he'll be good. For his worst map, I have Theme Park, and this is kind of for the opposite reasons. There's not a lot of setup, you don't really need a shotgun most of the time, most of the time it's just a rotate hole or two, and his smoke canisters aren't like game-changing on this map by any means, so this is probably the last map I would pick him on if I was trying to decide which maps to pick them on or not, which is strange. Anyway, Smoke's a beast. The next operator is Mute, and Mute is also a very, very good op, and again, doesn't really have a terrible map to play him on. I do have his worst map being Canal, and his best map being Villa. There's a lot of droning on Villa, and Villa is a huge map. A lot of the drones do come through doorways as well, so it's very easy to set up your mutes in areas where the attackers can't gain info, and just shutting down the info game on this map is very, very easy with Mute. So I have Villa as his best map. Going back to Canal, Mute is still pretty good on Canal, mainly on the server bomb site, but Mute can be good all the time. The thing about Mute is he's very versatile, so it's hard to say that he has a bad map, and really, he's more of a counter to a playstyle. Like, if the attackers aren't droning very much, Mute probably isn't the best pick, but if they're droning a ton, he can be good on literally any map. Next up, we have Castle. Castle, not good on every map. Now, there are some sites he's stronger on and some maps he is better on, the best one of which I personally think is Border. Now, Castle is also really good on Cafe, but the thing about Border is you can have a Castle strat for every single site. Let's say you pick the Vent Bomb site. You can do a Castle strategy up top, you can do a Castle strategy horizontally into Customs, into Tellers, and you can do the exact same thing for every other site. There's a vertical Castle hold and a horizontal Castle hold that you could set up on every side on this map. That's why Border is the best map for Castle. For the worst map, I have Favela. Now, Favela is a very confusing map. Not a lot of people even play it. You can't do too much with Castle here. Now, he's not completely useless on this map, but it's probably the worst map for him. Next up, we have Pulse, and Pulse's best map is definitely Consulate. Consulate is a map with a ton of soft floors. Any site on this map, you can nitro people on the floor above, whether you're on the middle floor or the basement floor. You can always find a Pulse spot to play and a nitro kill to get. Pulse is great on every site on this map, and in general, great consulate pick. Pulse's worst map is hands down Oregon. Oregon is a very utility-based map, and on top of that, there's really not a lot of destructive floors on it. So even when you're picking Pulse, you probably can't use that vertical play with your Pulse scanner. Yes, you can gather information, but the chances are if you're picking an ump over a Goyo, Jaeger, someone with a lot of utility that can block off those entrances and actually stall time, then you're probably just trolling the team a bit, and Pulse is typically not the best pick. Next up we have Doc, and Doc honestly is just kind of a bad operator because Thunderbird exists and Thunderbird's the GOAT. But for Doc's best map, I actually have Favela, and it's not for the MP5, it's for the GIGN shotgun. Doc is an absolute beast on this map, Pretty much everywhere you play on this map, you're within shotgun range, and this GIGN shotgun is going to give you that tiny bit of extra range to take those gunfights on this map. The worst map for him is going to be Clubhouse. Clubhouse is a map where you want a lot of wall denial, you want ADSs, you want Wamai, well, uh, and just a lot of utility in general. So picking Doc on Clubhouse kind of hurts the team a bit, and that's why I have this as his worst map. Rook is kind of similar to Doc, except he has armor and a 2.0 scope, which is why his best map is going to be Consulate. Consulate is the map for spawn peaks. It is by far the hardest map to get out of spawn on. There are tons and tons of windows, tons and tons of spots you can spawn peek from, and that's going to be his best map. The worst map for Rook is going to be Favela for the exact opposite reason. The MP5 is not going to be great close range. 
Uh, yes, he could probably use that shotgun, so now I'm kind of debating whether or not it is actually his worst map. But if you're running the MP5, Favela is definitely going to be Rook's worst map because of all those close range engagements, and there's not a lot of opportunity to actually get those long angles to hold with that MP5. And again, Rook is just kind of a bad pick in general, so like my honest advice is just don't play him. Now, Capcan is a very versatile op. He's good on a ton of maps. Really, Capcan's always a decent pick, especially if your enemies aren't droning. That being said, I personally think Villa is his best map. There's just a lot of places where you can put Capcan traps that catch enemies and just work really well, especially if you're roaming around them, you can shoot those drones and then they have to walk into them or check every single doorway. There's a lot of doorways. It's also got this like brownish color that makes the traps blend in a little better even. And then on top of that, he has that nitro, which is perfect for Villa because there's so many nitro opportunities on this map too. For Capcan's worst map, I have Coastline. And the reason for this is Coastline is just a smaller map. There's not as many doorways. There's a lot of gunfights that are going on from attackers outside onto defenders inside. So they're not coming through a lot of doorways unless they're just running through the entire map like a crazy man. In that case, go ahead, run some Capcan on Coastline. But other than that, I just think this is the worst map for him. Tachanka is an operator that I'm not a huge fan of. I just think smoke is way better in pretty much every circumstance. That being said, I do think he is good on Skyscraper. He can make all the sight setup really quick with his LMG. And on top of that, there's a lot of narrow entrances in Skyscraper. So if they are coming into tea room, you can fire it off. And there's a lot of just narrow areas in general where his fire is actually useful. A lot of the time I feel the problem with Tachanka is most of the entrances or places where you're playing them are too wide and it's very easy to avoid his fire, which is why I actually do like him on Skyscraper. For these reasons, I think his worst map is actually Border. There's not a lot of narrow entrances. Most of the hallways are wider and rooms are more open. So I just think his utility is not that great here. And because it's very cramped on the site, it's easy to get caught off with your launcher out on Border. So that's gonna be Tachanka's worst. Jaeger literally does not have a bad map. There's never a bad time to run a Jaeger just because his ADSs can always be useful. There's always gonna be some sort of grenades or some sort of utility being thrown on every map. And that's not really map dependent. That being said, I think his best map is Oregon. Oregon does have a little more utility. You are typically setting up shields like the blue shield or the kid shield and Pretty much all the sites, his ADSs are very useful and there's always good spots to put them on Oregon. His worst map, I actually wasn't sure, so I had to ask Twitter, which the general consensus was Villa. Now, I also saw that Border was also an option for his worst, and let's talk about why that is. The reason his worst maps are probably Villa and Border is because the holds on these maps are very spread out. On Villa, you're typically extending out to the other side or holding main stairs underneath main stairs just in general you're kind of playing the entire map on both of these rather than the utility being heavily dumped onto site you're probably seeing the utility being thrown spread across the map so it's hard to actually find like really strong places for his ADSs on these maps that's why these two are probably the worst bandit's best map you might think is clubhouse but it's actually theme park Bandit is a decent pick on Theme Park, and I think Bandit's garbage. So Bandit on Theme Park, 100% his best map, no doubt. You can use the batteries on the Armory bomb site, the Bunk bomb site, the Initiation bomb site, and there's always good spots to put them on this map. His worst map, however, just has to be Coastline. Coastline, there's not a lot of hard breach even going on. If anything, they're coming to the roof to hard breach the the pink wall in, in billiards. You usually don't even need a bandit for this. You can just shoot them off if you're playing around the map appropriately. The only map I'd really pick bandit on is theme park and club as well if Kate is banned, but club is definitely a second to theme park. If you wanna play Frost, play her on Chalet. Frost is actually really good on Chalet. Chalet has a lot of windows that attackers have to hop into to actually enter the map. There's not a lot of doorways to actually enter the map on Chalet. So putting your frost mats on the windows is great. In addition to that, the windows on Chalet are also very difficult to repel for the most part. If you're putting them in the right spots under windows that you can't repel, the attackers can't just get on the repel and go upside down to shoot the frost mat. This means when they hop in, they have to shoot the frost mat as they're hopping in. And if you're holding a good angle on it, you can shoot them as they're hopping in the window, looking down, shooting at that frost mat. Either that or they have to use an explosive utility on it. And it's always a win if you're wasting the attacker's utility on your utility. On the other side of things, frost worst map is going to be bank. Not a lot of windows that attackers hop in through. The map is very big in general. So even if you're putting them like on the floor, the chances are pretty good that nobody's going to hit your mat. So 
Definitely just don't run Frost on Bank, except for maybe the open area bomb site because you can put one on the window there. Valk's best map is actually a tough one. Valk is a really, really good operator. You can run her pretty much all the time on any map. That's why she's banned, like, all the time. But for her best map, I have Cafe. Cafe and Bank are probably her top two, and it was a bit of a toss-up for me, but I went with Cafe overall just because of the fact that Cafe does have a lot more soft floors than Bank does. So pretty much any site you play on Cafe, you can always be going for those vertical nitro kills with Valk, which is why Cafe is probably her best. It's a very big map as well, which allows you to put the cameras in all these wild spots to give you info with it being much harder for the attackers to find. Her worst map is going to be Emerald Plains. Nobody even knows this map in general because it just came out. So even if you're calling stuff off the Valk cams, nobody probably really knows how to play off that info anyway. Valk on Emerald Plains probably isn't helping much out. You're better off probably just running traps until you actually understand how the map works. For Cav's best map, we're heading back to Theme Park. Theme Park is big. It's a big map. Cav is actually pretty good on this map because there's a lot of spots you can just rat in and hide. Most people don't drone it all out because it's so big. I don't think Cav's a great operator. If you're gonna play her, play her on Theme Park. Her worst map on the other side of things is a smaller map, which is Border. Border, there's only a very few amount of flank routes. It's very easy to lock down the flanks on border. So picking her, it's either one, really hard to flank, or two, you actually can't find a hiding spot to go in that the attackers won't drone, and you'll probably just get caught off or or killed, and chances are you're probably wasting a pick by picking Cav on border. Now, I'm a firm believer you could probably run Mira on any map and make it good, but that being said, I have her best map as Chalet. Mira is really, really strong on the bar and dining site and master site on Chalet, which is why I have it as her best map. All three of these sites, she can absolutely plow down with her Miras, plus she has a secondary shotgun, and there again is a lot of site setup on Chalet. She can help with all of that and makes her really nice to have on Chalet. I really don't think Mira has a bad map, but if I had to choose one as her worst, it would probably be Villa. Mira is good on the Aviator site on Villa, actually very good, but for the other three sites, she's not like super necessary and really not that impactful, which is why I have it as her worst. Again, not a terrible pick, but just less good than the other maps. I don't know, let me know what you think about this. For Echo's best map, I have Bank. Valk is banned a lot on Bank, which is why Echo is a great way to gather information for your team. Again, absolutely massive map, and it's really important to have information on it. A lot of time people sneak through the garage and pinch the basement site. A lot of the time people come through lobby and just shoot the default cam, and then you have no information for lobby. Firstly, this echo cam, absolutely nasty for lobby. Use it if you don't already. Besides that though, it's really nice to be able to move those cams around. You have the 1.5 scope, which is great for all the long angles you have on bank that you have to fight. The shield is always helpful, of course, and Bank is Echo's top map, no doubt. For the worst for Echo, I have Coastline. Now, the main reason is Coastline is small, it's very fast-paced, it's very frag-heavy. If you're sitting on your Echo cams, chances are you're probably gonna die on your Echo cams because there's really no safe places to get on cams on Coastline. It's just not a great map to be driving Echo drones around. He's not the worst pick on Coastline, but I just think there's better ones for Coastline, and that's gonna be Echo's worst. Legion is also great on Coastline, but I think his best map is really Emerald Plains. Going back to what I said about it before, I do think traps are just gonna be really good on Emerald Plains because most people don't know the map. This gives you just extra info if you are roaming or lurking around, and it helps your team understand what's going on before it's too late, and you're not just getting random people walking in in random places, taking you by surprise. For his worst map, I have Oregon. L Legion's just not necessary. If you have a trap operator already, like Ella or Thorn, it's really easy to lock down the entrances with these guys instead. With Legion, it's probably just a waste of the goo mines. You could probably pick somebody better. It's not that he's horrible in Oregon, it's just that he's better on every other map. Speaking of Oregon, Legion's worst map, this is gonna be Ella's best map. And the reason for that is, there's only a few entrances into each site. Most of the sites on Oregon are pretty heavily bunkered and there's not a huge like massive roam game going on all the time. So having these Ella traps on each entrance into the site is very, very helpful, especially if they're trying to come in from one side later in the round and it's having that extra info without relying on somebody to have to watch it. That way you can actually focus on where the main push is coming from from the attackers and have those traps on your backside just as like a, hey, we got one over here, you better watch out because the chances are they probably shot the camera already or your teammates just aren't watching them. For Ella's worst map, I have Clubhouse. Ella's just not a good pick on Clubhouse in general. She can be okay on the basement site for like the blue stair and oil pushes. Honestly, her traps just aren't that good and there's a lot of really good operators on Clubhouse. So picking Ella on it is a bit of a troll, 
and that's why I have it as our worst map. Vigil's best map is Bank. Bank is just a massive map. It's really hard to gather information on the entire map and drone out the whole thing. It's even harder when you're trying to drone out a Vigil on it. If Jackal's been, you could run Vigil all the time on Bank because it is just gonna be impossible to hunt him down. His worst map, I have Emerald Plains. People, again, don't know what they're doing on Emerald Plains. They're probably not even droning it well already. Chances are you don't even need the Vigil Scanner to dodge drones. You can probably just walk around and you won't get droned anyway. Vigil's a pretty good pick on pretty much every map though. For Maestro, I have Consulate. Maestro is really, really good on Consulate. This is one of the few maps I actually play them on. The basement site's really good because you can use the Maestro cams to shock drones. You can also even impact the drone hole for thermite charges. On the lobby site, it's really good to have information for each site because it is a little more stretched out. The archive site, you can have information for site and for the basement if we have one bubble on each. And for the top floor site, again, information for long desk, CEO, projector. You can just get tons of information with Maestro and Consulate. For Maestro's worst map, I have Skyscraper. For Skyscraper, there's not a ton of entrances into the site and it's pretty easy just to watch those. The chances are pretty good they're pushing from one direction on Skyscraper because it's a little harder to lurk and like flank on. You don't really need the bubbles. You're probably not doing much with them. Yeah, the LMG would be nice on Skyscraper. He's not a garbage pick by any means, but I just have it oh, as just I did, I didn't know what else to put. Alibi's best map is Chalet, and this is for the same reasons as its Frost. The windows you can't repel on upside down to actually shoot the Prisma's feet, so you have to use explosives to break them. If you're not going to use explosives, you have to hop in through them, getting pinged, and the Prismas just go so hard on this map that it's ridiculous. On top of that, shields on Chalet are the goat. Shields on Chalet are super strong, and Alibi has one of those, along with the Bailiff to help with those site setups. Alibi on Chalet. Demon. Alibi on Oregon though, still pretty good to be honest. I have it as our worst map, but Alibi has a nasty gun, a shield, and the Prismas are usually pretty good. I only have Oregon as our worst because the Prismas are kind of less effective on this map. They're not by means like game changing, whereas on Chalet, they're super game changing. They're super strong. So I have Oregon as our worst, but no hate to Alibi. Clash. Boo! A lot of people really dislike Clash. I don't hate Clash. I think she's easy to counter. I think she is counterable and not OP. If you're running Clash, you probably just have suck and don't have good aim. That being said, her best map is definitely Oregon. Long pathways into sight. Very easy to move around with her. The pushes are typically one-sided on Oregon, so it's very easy to just hold them off and stall a lot of time and do damage and old people for your team. She's really, really strong on the basement site. That's probably the best site in the game for her. So yeah, Oregon. Clash's worst map's gonna be Coastline. Complete opposite reason. You're getting people coming in from every single direction. They're sitting outside, they're holding long angles. If you're moving around, chances are pretty good. You're probably just gonna get shot in the back at some point. Clash is pretty ass on Coastline and that's her worst map. Cade's best map is gonna be Clubhouse. Everybody probably already knows this. He's great on every site on Clubhouse. For the CCTV site, you can you can make the wall take longer to open, which adds a ton of pressure into site. You definitely want to stall time here. You can cade off the garage walls. For the basement site, you can cade the hatches, make, make them waste even more time. Cade is just really effective at wasting time on Clubhouse. Cade's worst map, Coastline. Same reasons as Bandit. There's not a lot of hard breaching going on Coastline. Most of the time, the other team doesn't even bring a hard breacher. Even if they do hard breach the wall, it's not a huge deal. There's not a lot of walls you really need to keep closed on this map and coastlines of frag fest, you don't really need Cade. For Mozzie's best map, I have Outback. Outback is a map where there's not a lot of drone routes the attackers can actually use. There's not a lot of ways to get their drones in the building without going through very common doors or simple drone holes. And it's really easy to cut off those drone routes using Mozzie's pest. On top of that, pretty much the entire top floor is soft, meaning if you catch a drone, you can set it up and go for the nitro kills from below. There's also a lot of spawn peak opportunities and the Roni with a 1.5 is a beast on this map too. For his worst map, I have Canal. Now, Mozzie isn't horrible on Canal. Mozzie's a pretty great operator overall with his three speed nitro and P10 Roni. He's kind of hard to say he's bad. So you can still run them on Canal. I just think there's a lot of better options for Canal. Canal is really good for trap operators, Mira, Smoke, Wall Denial. It's good to stall time on Canal. And Mozzie just doesn't do this as effectively as other operators could. Warden's best map is actually Theme Park. And the reason for this is Theme Park has a lot of longer angles. The MP5 with the 1.0x is really, really good for this. There's a lot of smoke grenades on theme park, so turn your scanner on and look through them, I guess. His worst map though is Outback. Now, I don't know why you would pick Warden on Outback. 
Opac's a very small map, so you definitely want to have like traps or you other utility to stall defenders, waste their time, force them to actually achieve stuff. By picking Warden, you're not forcing the attackers to achieve anything other than achieving not using smoke grenades well, which most people don't even run smokes on Outback or can theoretically use them very well on Outback. There's gonna be a lot of grenades and hard breach on Outback because there is those exterior walls. So the chances are your warden is not gonna pull anything off on Outback. Goya's best map is gonna be Oregon. Oregon again is very util heavy and a lot of the time the rounds actually come down to those last second executes. On top of that, there's a lot of very common areas that the attackers tend to feed through to get onto site. And these are the best spots to put the Goyo canisters. This is really good for not only stalling time, but also doing a lot of damage. And Goyo really just thrives on Oregon in general. Goyo's worst map is definitely Coastline. It's really difficult to find spots to put the Goyo canisters in that can't be shot by the attackers. Most of the spots you would typically think to put the Goyos in, the attackers can just get on a repel or shoot the canister from some other room. So in general, I tend to stay away from even playing Goyo on Coastline because most of the time the canisters just are completely useless. Well, my best map is Clubhouse. Everybody knows what my plays in rafters on CCTV because he can hold it himself. Those discs are absolutely huge but he's also really good for the basement site to hold the blue stairs and not get naded out behind the generator. But even that, if they're not pushing blue, you can throw his disc for dirt or kitchen hatch. He's just got a lot of a variety on Clubhouse and there's a lot of benefits to having the ability to move his stuff around like that. His worst map's gonna be Favela. Favela, short range, not a lot of nades, not a lot of utility being cleared. His discs probably aren't achieving much and either that or the attackers just aren't really using any projectile utility on favela chances are they're running in with a blitz or walking around with sled shotgun favela is an absolute scrap fest and you definitely don't need a wamai orcs's best map may surprise you but i personally think it's border the reason i think it's border is because of all the hatches on this map there's two hatches in cctv the hatch in office the hatch in archives and the small office hatch all on just the top floor orcs is really good for this map because there's not a lot of flank routes and opening up these hatches opens up a lot of opportunity for flank routes that weren't there before. You obviously can't jump up the hatch with any other operator, and that's why Oryx is going to be the best for Border. Or sorry, Oryx's best map is Border. He's not the best on Border, okay? It's his best map, guys. If you haven't figured that out yet, I don't know why you're still here. Oryx's worst map is gotta be Canal. Canal has very few hatches, and the chances are his ability isn't really gaining anything for you on Canal. Just pick another op. Like Malusi, because that's her best map, Canal. Malusi is really good on Canal because she can be super effective on every single site. There's always either a staircase to put it on, a corner to put it on, very powerful areas the attackers typically feed through, like the main breach on server. Putting one right beside there is a great way to stall them if they try to cross. The sky bridge is typically a place somebody might rat down. So having these Malusis just in common areas where people might try to lurk or come through is really, really good, especially on this map. For her worst map though, I have Border. Border, you're typically spread out among different areas. Sure, you could put it on the archives door and the armory door, but the chances are it's probably too late if they've gotten to that point. She can still be a good option on Border. I mean, Malusi is pretty much always a good pick just for general safety of your defense but I just think every other map she's probably a little more useful on. Aruni's a tough one because she's very versatile. I have her best map being Skyscraper. The reason for this is Skyscraper is pretty small. There is a lot of grenades being thrown on this map. There's a lot of really good spots for Aruni gates on it too. And on top of that, her fist makes it very easy to set up the site, help make rotates, punch holes in the floor to shoot people underneath. Having the versatility of being able to open the floor at your will is actually really nice for it. But honestly, she's good on a lot of maps. You could even argue she's better on Oregon, but I had to make a decision for the sake of the video. Her worst map is gonna be Consulate. Consulate, there's not a lot of really great spots for Aruni Gates. Like for the basement site, you'd have to put one on every single garage panel to actively be defending your utility on site. So there's not a lot of places for gates here that are actually gonna be good. On the top floor site, like the two CEO windows, you'd have to put one on each. So you're using extra utility to achieve the same purpose that you could on other sites on other maps. So for those reasons, I have a worst map being consulate. Thunderbird is very generic. Like there's not really a bad time to pick Thunderbird unless it's a site where you need other operators with specific utility to make that site hold better. That's why I have her best map being Coastline. Coastline's a map where you can literally run anyone you want because the chances are pretty good it's gonna come down to gunfights anyway. Coastline's not super strategic by any means. So on Coastline, you could pick a Thunderbird, run around, shoot some people, take some damage and go heal up. And you know what? 
who cares? Do what you want on Coastline. For worst map, I have Outback, just because of that idea again that you want some other utility for your team. Thunderbird probably isn't doing too much on this map. For Thorn, her best map is Chalet. Thorn is kind of shit. The reason I have her best map being Chalet is because this is one that I might actually pick her on. On Chalet, there is some staircases, which Thorn Traps are typically pretty good on these. And you can also do them on like some of the default plants and pull off some nice tricks. On top of that, shields, run chalet and she has one of those so chalet is going to be her best for worst map i have bank bank there's not a super ton of great spots for a thorn trap she's not horrible but she just thrives a little more on others when you think of azami's best map there is two maps that come to mind clubhouse and cafe cafe is a strong second but i am very sure that clubhouse is her best on clubhouse there are so many spots for azami barriers it's actually insane you can set them up in the rafters to totally bunk it down on the CCTV bomb site. On basement, you can use them in dirt tunnel, beside the hatch to cut off some of those angles you get from the kitchen hatch. You can use them on blue, church, pretty much anywhere on that site. You can also do the same thing on gym to block off a lot of those angles from the windows and just make it much safer to play. So on clubhouse, a zombie can completely change up the way the sites are played and make it so much safer. Her worst map is going to be Chalet. Now, I still think Azami is an amazing operator on Chalet. Azami is actually a top five defender right now, in my opinion. So you could totally run Azami on Chalet and be totally fine. There's just less spots to put her barriers. And like the basement site, they're not going to be super, super good. It's her worst map, but also she's disgusting on it still. So we figured out all the defenders worst and best maps, but how about the attack? What attack operators are we gonna be running on these maps to optimize our chances of winning? Again, the attackers will be in order, so if you wanna to skip to your main attacker or skip to the video, feel free to do so. Sledge's best map, hands down, is Cafe. Not only is Sledge great for opening those roof hatches, I mean, somebody's gotta do it unless your Sledge spawns somewhere else and just decides not to, like if you're rushing the white stairs, which is a fantastic rush, by the way. But besides that, every floor on every site is soft. If they're on the kitchen site, you can sledge out all the strong points of that site. If they're on the middle floor sites, you can sledge the top floor. Castles run a ton on cafe, so this is another great reason to run sledge. His worst map is gonna be Skyscraper. Now, Sledge is a really, really good op, and I still think he's really good on Skyscraper. It's just that Skyscraper, you're not gonna be encountering a lot of walls that you're sledging. A lot of the fights go down from outside the building. You're not gonna get maximum use of that sledgehammer, which is the only reason I have it as his worst. And then we have Thatcher, who is always banned. If Thatcher's not always banned, I have no idea who you are. Please let me know your rank in the comments. If I had to choose a best map for Thatcher, who is great on every map, I would pick Clubhouse. By having Thatcher on Clubhouse, you can open the outer walls really quickly and add a lot of pressure to the site very early. This will make defenders uncomfortable, move them into awkward spots. The, the more time you have to work with, the better on Clubhouse. So this is gonna be his best map. For Thatcher's worst map, I have Canal. Thatcher isn't gonna be doing a ton of work on Canal. Sure, you could Thatcher the hatch if it's catered on the basement site. But besides that, you're probably just Thatchering the outer wall on CCTV. I think Maverick's just a better option for this. You can Mav the wall and still have the grenades left over. Chances are you're probably only gonna use one or two EMPs to get that wall open. And then the third one might just go to waste. He's still gonna be good on Canal. Like, like if Thatcher's up, you might as well play him. If you've been part of this channel for a while, you know I am not a fan of Ash. You could go watch a lot of my other videos to hear my hate on Ash. But today we're not hating on Ash. We're finding her best and worst map. Best map for Ash is definitely Coastline. Coastline is run and gun. Coastline utility is less strict, less important. Because of that, I think a coast is her best. For Ash's worst map, I have Canal. Now, you could still use her Ash breaching charges pretty decently on this map. There is ways to use them. I just think other operators are gonna take priority over Ash on this map, and you're not gonna be really in spots to be like, I'm an Ash main, I'm gonna go crazy on Ash and make super game-changing plays as Ash on this map. So this is a map that you probably just don't want her. Thermite's best map is gonna be Clubhouse, and there's one specific reason I always think about Thermite when I think about club. And that's that you can repel on the exterior walls to avoid mute jammers. So if they're running mute to mute off the outer walls, you can just repel the Thermite them open. This is a great trick. You can do it on the construction wall. You can do it on the CCTV wall. You can do it on the garage walls. You can do it on the jacuzzi wall. You can do it on any outer wall to open up that wall. For that reason, I think this is just gonna be his best map hands down. On top of that, you can still Thermite like next to the kitchen hatch to open it up. Now this is super risky, you could get nitroed. It's a nice trick you can do. You can also put up dirt tunnel on the basement. So Thermite overall, best map, clubhouse. They're like literally butt buddies. They're lovers.
For his worst map, it's gonna be Coastline. Again, you're not gonna hard breach a lot. If you're gonna hard breach anything, it's gonna be the quad wall and you're not gonna rappel down there and do it with Thermite unless you're freaking nuts, which I did that the other day actually and it was, it, it kind of worked, but it was risky. <laughs> don't pick Thermite on Coastline. You, you don't need them. You really don't. What about Twitch though? Should you pick her on Coastline? Sure, but I think she's best on Chalet because the default cams are in positions that makes them actually difficult to shoot, especially from outside. With a lot of maps, you can shoot the default cams from outside, but on Chalet specifically, that lobby cam is gonna be super annoying and half the time it doesn't even get shot. I think getting rid of the default cams on Chalet is really, really powerful and a great reason for picking Twitch. Her worst map I'm gonna have to say is Theme Park. The drone routes on Theme Park are really tough and most of the time your Twitch drone is probably gonna get shot. Unless you're running the Elite skin because then it kind of blends into the floor on Theme Park, which isn't too bad. But yeah, those drone routes aren't great. Uh, it's pretty tough to actually get your drone into sight to get rid of the wall denial if that's what you're going for. And besides that, the default cams, not a big deal, not super impactful. Twitch isn't doing the most on this map. Monting is an op I think you should really only run very infrequently, but I've been seeing a lot more Montang play lately and it's been better, I guess, better Montang play. I still think he's kind of ass. On Clubhouse though, there is some really good Montang pushes that you can do on a variety of the sites. On a CCTV site, you can come up the rafter stairs and that Montang push is actually pretty solid if you're going for garage. And on the basement, you can do like a kitchen dirt with the help of the Montang. That's why I have Clubhouse as his best, but realistically, he can be okay on some other sites, on some other maps. I just think Clubhouse, he's got more use than others. For his worst map, I have Cafe. If you're running Montang on Cafe, you're probably not achieving too much. Cafe is very straightforward and very predictable in the way that people will play. So getting the extra info from the Monty isn't really doing much. And on top of that, you can't really hold off a lot of these areas with the shield and you're not really doing much in terms of doing much. Now, Glass recently got a buff. He's now a three speed and has the bearing nine. And I still think he's ass, but I think he's semi not ass on consulate. Really, it's just the basement and lobby site for me on this one. The basement site, you can go for these smoke executes with Glass, which can actually be really strong because you can hold off the pushing fleet of defenders that are running up to smoke or nitro or kill the planner or whatever. So this is somewhere where his scope is actually super, super useful with the smoke grenades. On the lobby sites, you can look through the windows, you can hold these long angles from spawn. And that's another reason I guess he's pretty decent on consulate. For other maps, not super good besides maybe chalet. That's another map I occasionally run him on. And all the other ones, I probably just wouldn't run glass. And the worst map I have for glass is Outback. There's not a lot of long angles on it. You can't make a lot of plays with that thermal scope. It's not really aiding you to win the round. It's just like, oh, I have a thermal scope. Nobody fucking cares. For Fuse's best map, I have Border. Now, some people might think it's Cafe. I just don't think he's very useful on any site besides the basement on Cafe. But on Border, you can use him on any of the basement sites. Even the, even the armory site. Like on the armory site, you could repel up to the sandwich window and fuse it so that you can kind of clear some of the utility in that area. Or you could fuse the archives window if you have, you know, if you're not a pussy. Realistically, fuse isn't the greatest on the top floor site, but for the other ones, he's pretty good because you can breach charge the floor and open it, or you can hard breach that hatch, or you can just fuse the site and push the defenders around. Fuse's worst map's gonna be Oregon, kind of for the same reason, except vice versa. So the floors on Oregon are not soft. You can't fuse really anything on the basement site unless you're fusing the hatches, which isn't gonna achieve much. The top floor sites, there's not really anywhere to fuse unless you're just fusing the windows right next to the defenders and they'll probably shoot you in that circumstance. So you're not gonna find a lot of places actually use those cluster charges. And for that reason, I have Oregon as his worst. I personally love Blitz. You know, it's just fun. Makes people mad, chocks their mental makes it an easy win. I run Blitz probably more than I would like to admit. I do think there's one map that he is an absolute beast on and that's Favela. Favela, very close range, I already said. Shotgun City on Favela run Blitz. Just try it, just see how it goes. Let me know. You will get a lot of kills, I guarantee it, as long as you aren't complete garbage. His worst map, gotta be Consulate. Blitz does not do well on staircases and Consulate has a lot of those. Besides that, all the rooms are very open. So you have the staircases, which he's bad for, open rooms, which he's also not good for. And in general, you're not gonna get into a lot of good engagements on consulate with Blitz. The other thing too, is a lot of the map is just window play and you really don't want a shield operator on a rappel. That is, that is the worst option out of all of them. IQ's best map is gonna be Bank. Bank is big. It's really hard to find Valcams, especially in that lobby area. Echo is super good on Bank too. So running the IQ on Bank actually makes sense. 
and you can figure out where all that utility is on site. Realistically, if you're looking around the site and seeing where the utility is, you can probably guess where the defenders are playing and use that information to make a better decision on where you want to push as a team. Wow, I just said all that and realized I'm talking to people who play ranked. IQ's worst map has got to be Clubhouse. It's very easy to find Valcams if they are running a Valk on Clubhouse if you just use your drones appropriately. She does not bring any utility for club that is actually useful. Sure, if you want to round and shoot people on Clubhouse, you can do that on any other map by just running around and shooting them. But her utility is complete garbage, completely useless on Clubhouse. If you pick IQ on Clubhouse, you are being a detriment to your team and you should probably hop on A, another hard breacher or B, a Zofia or somebody with grenades. Let's go back to Consulate for a second because that is Buck's best map. Consulate has three floors and about four square inches of floors that aren't soft. That means you can bust open tons of floors. There's also tons of walls you can buck open. You can make tons of plays with Buck on this map. You can open hatches, walls, floors, pretty much anything you see on Consulate, you can breach. Using Buck's skeleton key, you can get into piano, and from piano, you can not only open the floor for if it's a basement site, you can open the ceiling for if it's the top floor sites. Piano, Buck, go together like shit on a stick. I don't know, I don't know. Guacamole and nachos. Buck's really good on Consulate. Try him out, give it a go. That's his best map. His worst map's gonna be Bank though. There's not a lot of vertical play on bank, not at least in ranked. So picking them on bank, you're probably not gonna get any use out of that skeleton key. Uh, and you're better off probably just going somebody else. If you wanna run Blackbeard, firstly, what's wrong? Secondly, might as well play them on coastline. Again, coastline's run and gun. You just gotta kill people on coastline. Not a lot of strategy on this map. Just shoot them. Putting the shield on your face doesn't hurt. There's still probably better options, but if you are gonna run Blackbeard, try to just do it only on Coastline, please. Definitely don't run Blackbeard on Oregon, because that's his worst map. You don't wanna be walking down staircases as Blackbeard. You don't wanna be really doing anything as Blackbeard. Just don't play Blackbeard in general and don't run him on Oregon. Oregon, you're gonna want grenades, hard breachers, stuff to break stuff and stuff to open stuff because that's pretty much all Oregon is. Next up, we got Capitao. And Capitao is a very underrated operator and even I don't use him that much. He's also really good on Clubhouse. On the CC site, you can use him to clear out rafters with his flame bolts. You can use the smoke to cut the cross while you plant. For the basement site, you can do it from kitchen hatch to get an execute down from the hatch, or you can use them in blue to get blue stairs control, generator control area down there. Capitao is great on Clubhouse. I don't play him much, but if I were to, it would be on this map. On the other side of things, we have Capitao on Canal. Not the best pick by any means. I don't think it's horrible, but I still think this is his worst map to pick him on. So if you're playing Canal, try to just stay away from Capitao. We got another hard breacher here, and this one's gonna be Habana. Habana's best map is Bank. There's like 5 million hatches for the basement site, so opening up all these with Habana is just a great way to do it. If they have Cade, you can still open three hatches because Cade can only get two of the five on the basement site. On top of that, you have the range breach, so she's really good for the top floor because you can open up the elevator hallway from lobby. You can also safely open up the stock wall from the stock windows. There's just a lot of versatility in Habana's gameplay on bank, and that's why I think it's her best map. Her worst map, however, isn't gonna be Coastline, it's gonna be Theme Park. The reason for this is on Theme Park, you really want full-size breach holes. You wanna bring either a Maverick or a Thermite because then you can open up the entire wall on it. Having these little holes on Theme Park isn't great because there's not a lot of entrances into the sites on Theme Park. You wanna make new entrances that you can enter from on Theme Park and Habana is simply the worst hard breacher to do this with. On top of that, you're not gonna get any ranged hard breach that's actually gonna work out or like benefit your team at all, so. A button on theme park, not really a good idea. The other thing too is there's only one hatch on the basement site, so you can use any other hard breacher. Jackal's best map is gonna be bank. Again, we've already said this before, bank is fucking huge. You wanna clear that as fast as you can. Jackal's gonna assist you in the best of way. So running Jackal on bank, if he's not banned, is a great, great option. Jackal's really always a decent pick, especially if your droning's not good. So you can really bring him on any map, the worst of which I think is Skyscraper. Skyscraper is very easy to drone out. It's very simple to clear. You don't really need the Jackal on this one and you might just want some other utility. Ying's another operator that's situational, but can be good on pretty much every map. The best of which I think is Oregon. Especially for that basement site on Oregon, it can be difficult to actually get into the site because there's a 
very few amount of entrances and most of the time you're bogged down with utility. You can kind of can avoid that utility by just smoking angles off and using those flashes to gain control. And this goes for the top floor sites as well and the other two. But in general, she's just really good at avoiding the defender utility and forcing her way into spots where the attackers shouldn't be, or at least where the defenders don't want them to be. King's worst map I have as theme park. Now I still think she could be good on theme park. There's definitely some great plays you can make with her on theme park. I think she's just limited in her options and the plays you can make are pretty predictable and pretty easy to counter. This is also what I believe to be Warden's best map. So you might be seeing some Warden on this map and you might be just kind of an op to avoid. I have Zofia's best map as Oregon as well. Zofia is also really, really good on Clubhouse, but the reason I have Oregon above it is because on Oregon, there is just a little bit more utility than you would see on Clubhouse. What I think the greatest part about Zofia's ability is, is the ability to use her stunts to burn ADSs or Wamidis and then use her impacts to break utility. Because of this, she's very self-sufficient. And on the Oregon side, this is something that comes in super handy. You can shoot your stuns in through a doorway or down a hatch and then use your impacts to break whatever utility. And there's never gonna be a site that you're not able to use her utility on on Oregon. For a worst map, I have Skyscraper. I think Zofia is still useful on Skyscraper. If you're picking Zofia on Skyscraper, I'm not gonna be mad. Zo is just a good op in general. On Skyscraper, you're just seeing a little less utility, which is why Zo probably isn't as good. If anything, you're seeing more traps, which you can just shoot and you don't need to impact anyway. Her stun's also still super good. And of course the LMG, I just think there's better options for Zofia in terms of maps. Next up, we have Dokubi, and Dokubi's best map is Chalet. Chalet, there's a lot of roaming. It's a very heavy roam presence on Chalet. If that's not something you're already doing, you should definitely start doing it because Chalet is a map you want to roam. This is why Dokubi is going to be super good. The map is very small, so you can use those phone calls to hear where they are. It makes it a lot easier to just take control of stuff because there's a lot of different angles onto entrances. It can make it a little complicated to get in, but if you hear no phones around, you know you're safe, you can run into the map, and it makes it much, much easier to actually gain control on it. For her worst map, I have Border. Border is kind of the opposite. There's not a ton of angles onto entrances, so it's pretty easy to get control of specific areas if you're working as a team to do it. She can still be useful on it, but grenades are super, super strong on this map, so the chances are you probably want someone with grenades instead or like another hard breacher. For Lion, I have his best map being Coastline. Coastline is very small. It's very easy to pin people down on, and the help of the Lion scans make it a lot easier. Because his ability is global, he's not like terrible on any map. I have bank being his worst simply because the map is big. If they're roaming, it's probably hard to actually pinpoint the exact location of that roamer. Even with the help of the lion scan, it can be tough to capitalize off the lion scan because it's hard to get a pinch on such a giant map. Everybody knows Finca is super, super strong right now. She has two nades, a gone six and an LMG plus a global ability that has zero skill to use. For her best map, I have coastline. This is a Gun heavy map. This is where an LMG is gonna come in handy. Grenades, gone six. You can clear anything. You can kill anyone. If you're not running Finca on coastline, something is probably wrong with you. If you're not running Finca on literally every map, something's probably wrong with you. Her worst map does not exist. Finca does not have a worst map. I'm saying it right now. Finca is universally awesome and there is literally no downside to running her ever. Next up, we got Maverick and Maverick's best map is Clubhouse. People underestimate him so much. Maverick is literally the best attacker in the game. You cannot counter his wall denial. But Pax, you just get c 4 There is ways to avoid being c 4 while using Maverick. I haven't been c 4 using Maverick in like two months. You know why? because I'm the best Maverick ever, goddammit. And you can be too. If you haven't watched this Mav guide, go watch it. Or this Cade guide, which I brought up earlier, go watch it because Maverick is so, 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 so good. If you play Kali, stop playing Kali, run Maverick. You have an M4, you have grenades, plus you have a blowtorch, which is uncounterable by any other defending operator. On Clubhouse, you want to open the exterior walls. This is priority number one. Maverick makes this super easy. I can't believe people aren't running Maverick still. This is this is still annoying. Maverick makes this super easy. No, it's not map a hole and nade through it. It's make the wall soft and somebody open it up. He's extremely good on Clubhouse. He's extremely good on every map. The worst map I have for him is Coastline simply because there's not really any walls to Maverick that are gonna help you that much. Next up, we have Nomad. Nomad used to be super good and then they nerfed her and now she's like kind of shit. But besides that, she's still good on Consulate. Consulate has a ton of windows, a ton of jump outs, definitely 
want a nomad if you're attacking any site but the basement even on the basement site she's still very strong this is by far her best map if you're playing consulate and nomads up i would recommend running her for a worst map though i have clubhouse there's not a lot of jump outs on this map the flanks are very easy to hold and even for the basement bomb site you should realistically be pushing both staircases there's only the two ways out of sight main stairs and i technically oil pit but you can just clay more in so if, as long as you have one person in blue you're holding the flank already and the nomads aren't going to really do much i'm and main stairs if i didn't make that clear you want a person on main stairs as well for gridlock i have her best map as cafe and maybe even border on cafe gridlock's really good for locking down the staircases also, they make a lot of noise. You can do like smoke gridlock executes through the skylight if you have the balls for it. Her smoke grenades are good on cafe. The gridlock tracks are pretty decent. I don't think gridlock's that good, uh, but on cafe, she's viable enough to actually be an option. So on border, she can be decent because you can throw multiple tracks on the flank. So it takes even longer for that defender to get through those tracks and you'll probably hear it uh, and it gives you a little extra time to actually react to the flank because there's only a couple ways they could do it from. Her worst map, I have Villa. Villa is a map that you really don't need flank watch. Like if you're attacking the trophy bomb site and you're pushing right from master, you can't even get flanked. Even with the other sites, you're probably not getting flanked too often or there's really only one way to be flanked. So yeah, worst map, Villa, gridlock. Nox's best map is gonna be bank. Bank, again, giant map. There's a lot of default cameras on bank and there's a lot of area you have to cover as a defender. By running knock, you can sneak packs past those default cams. You should be using the default cams as a defender because they give you so much information on bank and knowing which ones are shot allow you to know where the attackers are coming from and where they're not. So if you think you know they're not coming from somewhere because of the default cam still being up and you can't see anyone coming through there because you're knock, you can then make the play of the sentry as knock by coming in the backside and shooting those defenders in the back. And this is a very good way to play her on bank. For a worse map, I have Canal. The chances are you're really just using her ability to sneak around on Canal and make less noise rather than actually avoid the cameras. So on Canal, Nox is not going to be the greatest option. She can be an option. She can still be decent on this map, but she's just better on others. Next up, we have Amaru. And I think Amaru is garbage. But when I do play her, I play her on Cafe. And that's what I think her best map is. Cafe is also very large and there's a lot of windows that you can enter the building in safely-ish to make her ability actually useful. So this is a good way if you do want to rush or you do just want to enter the map and catch people off by surprise, running Amaro on Cafe isn't the worst of the maps to pick her on. The worst of the maps to pick her on is Skyscraper. Skyscraper is a very small map and the chances are pretty good. There's a roamer somewhere near where you want to enter as Amaro. There's only a very few amount of windows you can actually directly go through out of spawn. So picking her on Sky is kind of dumb. Just dumb. It's just kind of dumb. Next up we got Callie, and I think Callie is also horrible. Callie's one of my least favorite operators. Again, I think Maverick is 10 times better uh, for doing the exact same thing and more. Her best map, though, if you are going to pick her on, I think it is Border. Now, there is one specific reason I think she is the best on Border, and it is because you can sit on this Repel outside Archives and make a huge line of sight all the way into Armory, and you can just sit and hold this angle with her sniper, and if someone peeks you, you're probably going to kill them. Besides that, though, you can, like, Cali the Armory wall, and you can kind of get wall denial sometimes for your team. She's not the worst on this map. She'd actually be the worst on Favela, which is her worst map. Favela, you're probably not getting anything done with the Lances. There's only really one exterior wall that you would actually need Cali for, or want Cali for, I guess. You never need Cali. And on top of that, super, super close range map. Her sniper is going to be completely useless, and you're pretty much going in as an operator with only a secondary SMG. And if you're picking her just for a secondary SMG, something is wrong with you because you can pick literally any other character and have a better weapon. Ayana, though, on the other hand, is a fantastic operator. Her best map being Coastline. Not only does she have grenades, which are great for this map, but she has an ARX, which is really, really strong on a map that's very gun heavy. On top of that, you can use her clones to get into the building. Information is really good on Coast, and just getting that one or two rooms inside of the map can be super impactful. So by using Yana's clones, you can constantly be getting more information on different rooms, figure out what's clear, and actually go and take that room. So whatever you find clear with the clones is the room to go and take using the clones. And Yana's just really solid on this map. Her worst of which is Emerald Plains. And this is kind of the same reason as Valk's the worst on Emerald Plains. Nobody really knows the map. If you're running Yana, you should be calling out for your team what you see, where defenders are playing, where the utility is, whatever it may be. And on Emerald Plains, your team probably doesn't know any of these callouts. Sure, you could get yourself in the building here, 
but you're probably just better off not even droning on this map because even if you do drone, you probably don't even know what you're looking at because it's just so weird. That being said, she still would be decent on Emerald Plains because she is just a nasty operator overall. Next up, we got Ace, and I'm sure a lot of people have skipped to this part because Ace is a very, very popular operator. If you play Ace, you probably know that Clubhouse is his best map. But why? It's not so you can ace the exterior wall on Clubhouse, I, I promise you. The reason Ace is the best for Clubhouse is because his ranged breach is super, super strong on this map. Take the CC site for example, you shouldn't be acing open the outer wall, you should be saving your aces for the garage CCTV wall. Because if you ace this garage CCTV wall, this one in rafters, you can see into the rafters and actually kill the rafters players from outside the breach. And this is a really powerful way to use ace. On the gym bomb site, you can ace the bathroom wall from the jacuzzi balcony, which is also super good. This gives you a really powerful lines of sight into the bomb site. And on the basement bomb site, you can ace open the dirt tunnel along with the kitchen hatch. Even if the kitchen hatch is cated, you can actually ace beside it on the floor to still open up the hatch and completely avoid the cake claw. Ace in general, super strong on clubhouse. If you're running him, pretty much on any map actually. He has an AK-12, so I would not be mad. For his worst map, I have Canal. Now Canal, there isn't a lot of hard breach availability on this map. Even if you're trying to use the range breach on like the interior walls, like the green wall, for example, the chances are you probably have a defender there somewhere to shoot it off anyway. So there's not a lot of opportunities to actually use it on an interior wall. For those reasons, you probably just want a non-range breacher like Thermite or Maverick open up the main wall, and then from there, you can just use other sorts of utility to try and get control of the site. Next up, we have Zero, and a lot of people either really like Zero or don't play him at all. I think Zero is a situational op that's really, really good on two maps, Bank and Chalet. Those are pretty much the only two maps I actually play Zero on, but on both of them, he's very, very strong. I have Bank as his number one best, and that's because you can get control of this, again, giant map using his zero cams. Using the zero cams in lobby, elevator hall, tellers, square, anywhere really gives you information on these big rooms that are very difficult to drone out and check every single cor corner for roamers. Most of the time you can kind of skip the process by shooting a cam in somewhere and it just saves you a lot of time and makes them very strong on these maps. On top of that, you can take out the default cameras with these and that just makes it even easier. For his worst map by a border, it's very closed off and small. It's very easy to shoot his zero cams. You'll probably hear them if they don't deploy anywhere near you and because it's smaller and there's not a lot of flank routes you really don't need them and you're probably not achieving much with them on this map for Flores, i have his best map being oregon oregon again is super utility heavy so having his drones are super super strong on this map now mute is very prevalent on oregon as well so the chances are if you're running into mute jammers you probably want to pick somebody else but if you're not he is so so op on this map because you can just get rid of all the defender utility. On bunker, you can get rid of the shield, the ADSs, the Womidis, the traps. You can do the same thing on the top floor if you do it from big window or even from trophy. On Oregon, Flores is super, super strong and you definitely wanna be running mute if the enemy team knows this. First worst map by a bank. You're not gonna be in a lot of positions as Flores on bank to actually get your drones deep into sight to start clearing that utility. If you're trying to come through garage, you have a long route to take with that drone to actually get near the utility. Same thing with lobby, same thing with square. You're not gonna get a lot of opportunities in general to actually use the drones to actually clear stuff. So the chances are if you're using Flores on bank, you might just be using his drones for extra info. And in that case, you're better off using Yana. And then we have Osa. Osa is a super, super fun operator and there's a ton of things you can do with her shields that a lot of people don't know about, but that's not what we're gonna talk about right now. Osa's best map is Coastline. You can use Osa on every single site on Coastline to just gain these powerful lines of sight directly into the site. You can do this from the hookah balcony, from in aqua onto site, outside the service door, outside the lobby door. There's so many opportunities to use these shields effectively. And a lot of the time people just don't have the impacts for them. On top of this, the smokes are really good for planting and coastline is a map where it's very easy to plant because the sites are so close to the exterior of the building. So Osan Coast, absolutely solid. On the other side of things, I have her worst map being theme park. Now I think she could still be decent on theme park in theory. I just don't think her shields are ne anywhere near as packful. Theme park is pretty bunker heavy and you're not gonna really cut off a lot of power lines into sight. So running around theme park is just weird, I think. But that being said, I, I wouldn't hate on somebody running her on theme park. And finally guys, we come to the last operator, the newest operator, Sense. I'm not a huge fan. I did do a video on Sense uh, and I, I, I called Ubisoft Failbisoft because of the release of Sense, so that wasn't super nice. 
That being said, I have Sense's best map as Villa. Again, not a huge fan of Sense. On Villa, there is some good opportunities to use them though. I think that to take main stairs, you could throw a Sense orb down the left side of the hallway and you can push up main without being shot from like library or art where a lot of defenders typically play. You can also use them in the 90 hall to block off a, the 90 hall player, or B, the site players to pursue the 90 hall player. So there is some good options. You could even use it for study to try and take in through the study door or for the master sites, etc. The list goes on. So I think there is some viable uses for sense that isn't just use it for an execute on Villa. So you can actually use the orbs throughout the round rather than just using them on the execute, which is most of the time what you're using sense for on the other maps. And most of the time you don't really get to that execute. The worst map I have for sense is consulate. Again, consulate is a lot of window play and you're outside the map a lot. The sense walls really aren't gonna do much for you. For those reasons, I just think consulate, yeah. We're at the end of the video, guys. For those of you that made it, don't play sense. That's that's my final tip. <laughs> anyway, guys, I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions for me, leave them in the comments. Enjoy your evenings. Bye-bye.